Hello and what's going on? I'm El Director, this is El Director Vision, and you're watching Indie Rebel, Hollywood effects without the Hollywood budget. Today we're going to take a look at how to do a lightsaber effect for free inside of the Fusion tab of DaVinci Resolve or in the standalone version of Fusion, um, which I am known to be using. So let's take a look at how we're going to do it. I have here a pre-keyed shot of me wielding a lightsaber and feeling like a total badass. So let's take a look at the original shot. There it is. And I basically just threw on uh, one of my karate gis and, uh, well actually that's a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, but sudden point. And we shot this out in my studio, which is basically the attached garage that we've turned into a production studio. And we're just here on the green screen and you know, it's not very impressive yet, but boy, I sure do look intense. I mean, we get back here to the beginning, just look at that face. It's like I want to kill the camera. But anyway, how are we gonna do it? So I ran it through the Delta Keyer here and also did a little bit of despill on the, the shot. We merged it on top of the spaceship background and we're not gonna go into any details about how to do keying. We can save that for another tutorial. What I wanna focus on today is actually how to do the laser blade itself. So how are we going to do it? Well, I find it's best to work on not this keyed version, but we're gonna go back to the original version. And I've also enabled a LUT. By default, the footage was all flat looking like this. So I'm working with a LUT. It's not the final color correction, but it at least makes the contrast look a lot better and a lot closer to what the final shot will be. Now what we want to do is just go and click off of our shot, and I want to add a polygon tool. So we just have this thing that says polygon right here. We're going to click that, and it adds a polygon right here into our flowchart. And the way the polygon works is that you can use it to literally make all sorts of fun little shapes like this. And if we view it, you can see that we've actually just created an alpha channel. And that's going to come into play here in just a little bit. But we don't want this shape, so let's go ahead and you know delete this, and we'll do it again. We will add a polygon tool, and I want to view my shot. And what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and add, with the tool selected, we will come in here and go 1 and 2. And we're going to go all the way up here to the top, 3, 4, and then come back in and connect it just like that. Now, I need to go ahead and line these up. I want my points to be parallel uh, and even with my blade, so it's actually outlining the blade. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but it does have to be good, as the old saying goes. So I can do that one there and that one about there. And because the saber goes off screen, I do have my points going off screen. And I'm gonna come in here and just kind of straighten these out a little bit. And again, just try to cover as much as I could. Now, if I really, really felt like I could come in and add all the different points and things like that uh, to really round it off, but honestly, just animating the four points is gonna be hard enough. Now what I wanna do, let's go ahead and get to a nice little zoom out here. And actually I'm gonna drag this down and we'll fill this up a little bit more, about like that. That'll be easy to work with. I'm going to just go to the next frame. So I'm gonna frame forward. And then we are going to come in and literally reposition all these points again, just like this. And if I go back to the previous frame now, that keyframe has already been created. So that's actually extremely helpful. And I can also go backwards in time as well and do the same thing. Just rearrange my four corners of the blade. Now, I don't want you guys to sit here watching me rotoscope this thing for about 30 minutes, which is what it took me to do. So what I'm going to do is we're going to delete that polygon and we're going to use this other one that I had hiding right there in plain sight that I've already created. And let's go ahead and take a look at this one and see how this mess works. So if I just arrow through this, you can see that I've traced my shot. And as the blade begins to move and the motion blur kicks in, the width of my outline, the width of my roto also changes with it. Now in a sh shot like this, because of the rotation of the, what the blade is doing and the pivoting, it's pivoting right here, I actually crisscrossed my shot or my, my roto. So it was here like this. And just for this one frame, I go ahead and I stick it over here, crisscrossing it like that to help kind of cover that up. And then we go back to our next frame and now it's in motion. And I just exaggerated the, the blur from here. I could go through and add more points to really make it photo real, but honestly, when this thing goes by, no one's gonna note it. I mean, it's literally on here for 1 24th of a second, you know? Um, the other thing, you'll notice that I had these orange stripes on my 
broomstick and I wrapped just black gaff tape around the bottom and I've got these orange duct tape stripes and that's so when it's in motion like this I can see the stripes I can see the stripe here and I can see the stripe up here and it just makes it real easy to figure out where on earth this blade actually is in the shot in fact I can look at this now and be like oh that's off a little bit that should be up there and again I'm gonna flip through and this technique works even if you're not on a green screen. Let's say you just shot out this out in the forest with your friends. You'd be doing this exact same process, this exact same technique. And you just go through and you roto out your shot. Okay? So that's step one. Step one is getting your roto. Now, step two. How are we going to start making a laser blade out of this? So let's come up into here. We'll fit this to the frame. And what I want to add is a background node. So I'm going to hit shift space, type in background. And here's my background right here. And I'm going to make this first one white. So I'm just going to click and drag and make it white. And now I can run the mask input of my background into my polygon mask that I made earlier. And you can see now I have a white blade on an alpha channel. And if we get ahead of ourselves here and merge this into the actual shot, we can see that now I have a white blade that is rotoscoped out to track with me throughout the shot. So I bring it up into frame, I get in the cool badass pose, and then I start swinging it through. So let's go back to that frame. That looks really nice. And now, in order to start creating the glow, I'm literally just going to blur my white solid at this point. Stupid simple. Add a blur, and we can start blurring that out a little bit, just like that. Just a little one, because this is the core. Now, I'm gonna add another background over here. And now we're going to use this one to make our blade color. So let's go ahead and view it. What color lightsaber blade do I want? Well, maybe because I like kind of golden colors, I'm going to go with this like golden hue right there. I'm going to take the same polygon mask, run it into the new background, and I'm also going to add a blur after it. Okay. Just like that. And now what I want to do is I want to merge this one, my white one, on top of my um, gold one. So I'm going to take this blur, drag it to the output over here. That creates a new merge node. Let's go and keep everything in line so we can stay nice and neat and organized and know what on earth we're doing. And if I view that merge, you can see it shining through behind. And we'll take our blur for the gold. Uh, for the gold. I can blur that out even more. Now you can see that's starting to look a lot like a lightsaber. And if we just merge that on top of the shot, we'll get rid of this one, drop it in right down here, and view our shot. I now have a lightsaber blade, and it's looking really, really nice, and I can just kind of click through the scene. And you can see you can give, get the big whooshes and swipes with it. When it crosses over, that's the only time I really do have issues. And if you start getting the pivot, you might want to add another mask or really add an extra point to the mask, at least just for that one frame to really cover it up. In my case, for a YouTube tutorial, I wasn't going to spend the time to fix it, so we leave it at that. Um, but yeah, you can just see how nice this actually begins to look. And the cool thing is, is it's all procedural. Because I've rotoed it once, I can literally come in now and just change my, my blade color anytime I want. Maybe I want to go red. I'm a Sith Lord now. You can see I turned it to red. I could come down and go Luke Skywalker green, one of my favorites. You could go Anakin and Rey blue. Um... Maybe you want to be Mace Windu and give yourself a purple blade. You can do that too. And what's neat is, so you get this all done. I'm going to go for maybe this kind of a deep blue hue like that. Now we can bounce into the color corrector and apply a nice color correction to the image. And this is what we end up with. And you can see this actually looks pretty good. I've got a little bit of a fake camera move that would need some work. Because I squatted low, got no good power stance, and so I had to really, uh, you know, fix that. Got a little bit of a light wrap and blur around me. Uh, green screen, you know, not perfect. I could have spent some more time tweaking the key, but I think overall this gets the, the point across. And that lightsaber looks really, really good. And as you can see, this is actually looking really good. Um, all we need to do now is pop in some sound effects to complete it. You know, get the ignition. Zoom, 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 zoom. And, uh, I mean, even just my own sound effects, I feel like really adds to the, the cinematic nature of it. Uh, I've got a little bit of a fake camera move here that would need some work, but for the purposes of this tutorial, uh, I think we're going to call this one good. Really just want to show you guys how to do 
the uh, the laser blade effect. You can also do blaster bolts the exact same way. Um, they're just a, a mask that's flying through until it hits the lightsaber. And uh, you know, if you've got two people fighting in the shot, you just got to do basically twice the work. Give each one their own color, and you're all set and uh, good and ready to go. So if you want to know more about this, you have any questions or anything like that, let me know down in the comments below. Uh, otherwise, don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more cool tutorials like this using Blackmagic Design Fusion or the Fusion page inside of DaVinci Resolve. I'm L Director, this is L Director Vision, and you've been watching Indie Rebel Hollywood Effects without the Hollywood budget. We'll see you next time.